Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be going over how I go about traveling across the country for my great LARP adventures at Milsom West. I know many of you guys are aware that I work for that company as cadre. Cadre are former military guys hired on by Milsom West to act as leadership on both factions and to help provide military context to the things that we're doing out there. I go to these events all the time, once, sometimes twice a month, all across the country, soon across the world. We're gonna be doing an event here in Spain very soon, but more often than not, I am flying to these events and I have to lug all of this military style gear and guns across the country. I get the question all the time, how I go about lugging all this gear uh, through airports and on airplanes. So today I'm gonna be doing a video going over all the stuff that I bring with me and all the bags and how I organize everything to best fly with essentially a bunch of military gear and military style guns. Even though they're airsoft guns, a lot of the principles will apply. I know some of you guys might disagree with some of the things I put out here. Feel free to comment that in the comments section. But again, this is just what has worked the best for me. I do this once, maybe twice a month, and your mileage might vary, but again, Take this with a grain of salt. If you have a different way of doing this and that works the best for you, go ahead and do that. This is just, again, what works the best for me. Everything you're gonna see here on this packing list was gonna be based off of what I took to the last event I went to, Balkar, one of my favorite AOs. So some of the things might change depending on your loadout, but for the most part, if you apply the principles that I uh, show you guys here, you should have a pretty easy time flying with all of your LARP gear. But before we get into it, we're from our sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Shields. Shields is an outdoor supply store that carries all the top brands, including Leupold, Sitka, Mystery Ranch, and more, so you don't get caught lacking in the great outdoors. Go check them out at one of their many locations across the United States, or go to the website and check out some of the deals they got going on there. So go check out Shields, and big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. Also want to give a quick shout out to Badlands Ammunition. They provided a lot of the ammunition you've been seeing me fire on the channel. They're great people, and if you go to the website and use code BLUEGENE at checkout. It gets you a discount there and it helps out the channel. So big thank you to Badlands. Now let's get back into this video. All right guys, so in this video, I'm gonna be breaking it down bag by bag or case by case, starting off here with a the gun, then moving into my check bag, which is gonna be my rucksack, and then on to my carry-on bag, as well as my personal item, all of which uh, plays into a larger system of how I get all of this stuff through the airport into wherever I'm going. So starting off here with a gun, this is probably gonna be probably the most controversial uh, topic when it comes to this because a lot of different guys like to do different things when it comes to transporting these things through airlines. The reason for this is because airsoft guns are kind of weird as they are not really firearms. Um, so you can go two different ways. You can go the by the book way in treating airsoft guns as what they are, toys. Or you can go the different direction and treat these things as real firearms. And a lot of this stuff depends on who you're dealing with that day at the airline because by the book, airsoft guns, you know, by the airline um, rules is that they are considered toys. But not everybody who works at the airlines knows this. So what I have found to work the best for me is to get a gun case like you see here with this old Pelican case. If you're gonna get a gun case, get a good one to store your BB gats when you are flying because airsoft guns are actually more delicate than the real guns. So you kind of want to have these things protected as much as possible. So I use this gun case right here, this Pelican case, and I store both of my airsoft guns in here. As you can see here, this thing's large enough for me to fit two. I typically bring two airsoft guns when it comes to these events, just in case one goes down. And God willing, an air, these things are just uh, unreliable pieces of shit. But as you can see here in this case, I have enough room to fit both of these things. And I always bring these four TSA locks that you see here. These go and lock onto my particular gun case. The reason I need four is because I have four holes. Nice for locks to go into on this case. Even now, two of these are actually the ones that are reinforced with steel. Um, I'm saying this because I've ran into this. I've done two locks, and then I got told to buy two more by that particular agent. So I have four of these TSA locks. These things are super cheap. You can get these things on Amazon. So how I go about this, guys, is when I first get to the airport, I take my gun case over there with the locks on it. I go to the check bag area, and I say, hey, 
I have these airsoft guns. I'm not sure if you know what these are. Sometimes if you say, hey, they're kind of like paintball, they might know. Sometimes you might get lucky and deal with an agent that actually knows what airsoft is. And they're like, oh yeah, cool, those are toys. You don't need to go through all this. But it's honestly not that big a deal just to say, hey, uh, I'm just gonna treat these as real firearms. All you have to do is fill out this little slip. They throw this inside the case to show that the firearms are unloaded. And what this does is that you're not gonna have to deal with a person from the TSA um, finger fucking your airsoft guns to find out that these things are not in fact real guns and cannot load real bullets because a lot of times they'll take these things into the back where you can't see it and you can't advise how to take these things apart and they end up uh, sometimes destroying your airsoft guns in the process of trying to figure out if these things are real or not but if you go out straight off the bat saying hey these are unloaded firearms you're there's a less of a chance of the tsa agent uh, trying to figure out what the heck this thing is. Sometimes I carry other things inside the gun case like you see here with the optics sometimes like for this RPK I'll put a drum mag in there because my main goal is to keep a lot of the heavy stuff out of my actual check bag that way it don't get overcharged later for a bag that weighs over 50 pounds. So as long as you keep your actual check bag which we're going to be going to here shortly under 50 pounds you're not going to get a massive upcharge on that. So after I get this slip from the person at the check bag area throw this in the gun case lock this thing up and then they'll ask you usually to take it to the oversized bag area and then they take it from there and I don't have to deal with it. So it's actually kind of easy and flying with actual real guns as well same rules apply and it's that easy it's not that scary so after i dealt with my airsoft guns then i move on to my check bag and the check bag what i have found to work the best for me is trying to store all of your stuff as much as you can in the ruck so inside this ruck this particular one is the crossfire australia dg16 this is a new ruck that i've been trying out before this i was using my old alice pack from the army which works out very well, the large Alice for actually transporting all of your stuff inside of it. This includes the chest rig, your clothes, your boots, all that kind of stuff inside this bag. But I'm also going to try to keep a lot of the heavy stuff out of this thing and put that into my uh, carry-on bag. And that's gonna include my helmet and armor and other valuable items that I don't want in my check bag, which we'll get into here shortly. So the name of the game with a ruck, again, is to keep this thing under 50 pounds. A good way to um, judge this is to get something like a fishing scale that you can hang up in your garage or wherever and hang your ruck up on it to see if this thing weighs 50 pounds or not, or under 50 pounds. It's what we used to do in the military when it comes to weighing rucks, and you can do the same thing here. And I'm just gonna show you guys everything that I got going on inside this ruck and to show you that you can, in fact, store all that stuff inside of here and not have it weigh as much. So starting off here at the front, you guys can see my sleeping mat. I have it lashed to the top here. That's not an issue. And then inside of here, an empty uh, water bladder. This is where my um, camelback is stored. But as you can see here, I got my boots. Then I got all my clothes inside this stuff sack. This includes my uniform, my socks, all that kind of stuff. This isn't all my civilian clothes that I'm gonna use uh, walking around prior and after the event, but this is all the stuff that I'm gonna be wearing inside the field. Got a bunch of other stuff like a dump pouch, my spare eye pro, water, and then I have my rig inside of here with all the magazines. I took the antenna off of my radio because I had one snap in the past by shoving it inside a ruck. Um, so you can store all of this stuff inside of here. And at the very bottom, I have a Wobby and a bivy uh, cover. So I'm able to store all of this stuff. This is essentially everything that I'm be carrying out in the field inside the ruck. But as you notice that I don't have my helmet or armor or anything inside of here because that stuff weighs a ton and it would most likely lead to this thing weighing um, over 50 pounds. But last time when I went through the airport with this thing just a few days ago, it came in around 45 pounds. You could probably get away with it being a little bit lighter, but um, you know, I like to carry some stuff out there and this has worked out. So at this point, we've done our gun case that has airsoft guns in it and our check bag. Now we are ready to go through security and get to our plane and take on both the check bag and our carry-on bag. So starting off here with a check bag, this is a Vertex, an older Vertex Gamut. I've had this backpack for a very long time. This is the backpack that I honestly use all the time. I use this thing for travel as well as 
it's most often my gym bag. But this thing is awesome for carrying a bunch of stuff that I don't necessarily want to put in my check bag or my gun case. All right, so opening this thing up, you can see in here I have my helmet. This thing weighs quite a bit. Don't worry about the flags. It's I was on Rust 4, okay? But as you can see, I have my helmet inside here with my Ear Pro. That is weight savings out of the ruck so it doesn't weigh or get overweight. And then on top of that, I have my batteries. So based on the airline regulations, you cannot check um, lithium batteries. So inside of here, I have all of my airsoft gun batteries. It is incredibly fun to go through this on the scanner and then sometimes people see it and uh, <laughs> it looks a little sus, but as soon as they see the matrix and all the Titan and all the logos on it, and you tell them that it's an airsoft gun battery, um, they won't bother you. But sometimes I've been pulled aside and it's really awkward when I have my uh, helmet inside of here and uh, it's just, <laughs> it's fun. Also guys, if you are traveling with armor, like armor plates, I highly recommend that you take those out of your plate carrier and put them inside of your carry-on bag as well. That's just another weight saving tip. That way you don't get overweight again. Um, I've done that, that's worked out well for me in the past and I end up having to switch a few things around on here. But if you're gonna be traveling with armor, try to carry that stuff on as much as possible. All right guys, moving on to the final item here, the personal item. So what I like to use is this little assault pack. This is a Wartek um, Burkut, I believe it's called. It's some Russian uh, name, but I like to use this thing because I'm taking this bag out to Milsom, Milsom West anyways. I like to take this thing out and give this to maybe our platoon medic. That way they can carry water bottles because a lot of guys don't take assault bags with them. So I could take this thing out with me and it works out nicely as my personal item. And inside of here, I usually have my spare clothes and some of my toiletries um, for before and after the game, as well as my night vision. So I highly recommend that you do not check your night vision or even put it in your gun case because crazy things happen. I do not trust TSA uh, with my, at all. So you, I would highly recommend that you carry any of your really expensive items on the plane with you if it is legal. So night vision, totally, uh, totally cool to do so. I haven't had any issues with this thing going through the scanner or anything like that, but whenever I'm traveling with night vision, it's always going in this bag and it's staying between my legs. I'm not gonna put this in the overhead bin. The helmet can go up there in the large bag, but this thing could stay underneath my seat right next to me because it's night vision, it's really expensive, and I don't want it broke. Well guys, that is how I travel for my great LARP adventures at Milsom West. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions of how you do this, please let me know down in the comments. Again, this is just what has worked well for me in the past and based off of my experience doing this once or twice a month. This video is just to help give you guys maybe a little bit of guidance if you've never done this before, maybe you're going to your first Milsom West or just have never flown with all of your airsoft stuff or any of your gear before. Well, that's about it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Jean Operator or go to my website, thebluegeneoperator.com to find some cool shirts and merch, which helps out the channel. Also, guys, if you want to get involved with the channel a little bit more directly, I got Patreon helps him buy guns, gear, ammo, all that kind of stuff that goes into running a gun channel. And it'll get you access to videos a little bit earlier than everyone else. But hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time.